What's up? Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Mitchell Pearson, consultant and trainer here for the last nine years at Pragmatic Works. Today we're going to be taking a look at how do we write a SQL case statement in DAX. I get this question all the time. I get this in emails. I get this in comments on my different YouTube videos. Uh, and I also get this in DAX boot camps from different students that I've taught over the years before we get to that part in the class. Like, hey, how do I do this? So I know this is a subject of interest. And so therefore, we're going to jump right into the demo here. Now, to save you a little bit of the drama, we're going to actually be using a function in DAX called the switch function. I did not come up with this solution. I read this solution many, many years ago from a guy in the community named Rob Coley. Uh, so give credit where credit is due. He has a blog, and if I remember correctly, I think it's called The Diabolical Genius of Switch True. And he walks through exactly what this is and why it works. So let's dive right into the demo. I'm going to show you two things. One, how to use the switch statement to essentially get us that case functionality, cleaner code, more manageable code than a bunch of nested if statements. Two. I'm going to show you how you can add in additional logic, right? So I got this email just the other day and I was like, you know what? This is a super easy video. I'm going to knock this out. So here we go. I'm going to jump over to the data view inside of my report. And what I have here is we're on the customer table and in the customer table, I already have an age breakdown column, but I did that with a nested if statement, right? So if age is greater than 55, then 55 plus if age is greater than 45, then 45 to 54, else if it's you know greater than 35, 35 to 44, so on and so forth, right? But that can be a little bit difficult to read when you get a bunch of nested if statements. So let me go ahead and click on that real quick. Let's look at the expression here. And so what we have is if customer age is, you know, boom. If that's true, 55 plus. If it's false, then do another if statement. If that's true, 45 to 54. If that's false, then we do another if statement, right? And then if you start to add in stuff like, additional conditional logic like if this and this if this or this forget about it going to be very difficult to read now granted i purposefully made this difficult to read to prove my point but nonetheless uh we're going to go with the switch true statement so let's jump right in and take a look at the code we're going to use two columns for this demo the first one is i have a customer age column that i created and the other one is i have a total transactions column um, that's going to be so I can just simulate very quickly and briefly here the conditional, like the additional logical information, like an and condition or something like that. So over here on my customer table, I'm going to right click, create a new calculated column. If you're watching this video, you should know what that is. And then we're going to call this one something like age breakdown, and we'll just say two equals, right? Now, in my previous one, we did if, this time we're going to do switch. And so we'll go down here and say switch. And then this is the magic. So the switch statement by default is not really designed out of the box to work with range type calculations. It's really meant for equal type operations, right? If month equals January, then one, February, then two, March, then three. That's really the way it's designed. But in that blog that I mentioned earlier in this class, Rob Coley walks through and explains exactly why this works. But we're gonna type in here in the expression true. And then we're going to start typing in our values. And so this makes it very easy to read and understand. So I'm going to say, look, if the age, so in our customer table, we have customer age breakdown is greater than or equal to 55, then the customer is going to be 55 plus, right? And then we'll do this again. And I'm going to copy that out so I can just do it a little bit faster. I do need to add a comma on the end. And we'll say if the customer is between 45 or greater than or equal to 45, this is going to be 45 to 54. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning here while I'm here is a lot of times students will say, well, what about, uh, don't you need to say if the customer is, you know, greater than 45 and less than 55, you know, greater than or equal to, and you kind of set the, the lower boundary and the upper boundary. And the answer to that is no, because essentially we are going to be within what is known as the first pass rule. So if a, if an age breakdown is above 55, and it falls into that first category, it's no longer available for evaluation when we get to the subsequent conditions here. Now that, that can, you know, to some degree have an impact on performance, right? Because if you are evaluating millions of rows as you're working through this table, you would obviously want to do the larger buckets that are going to evaluate the true first. So if my biggest bucket was 18 to 34, 
I would try to figure that one out at the top to eliminate those rows from subsequent evaluations, hypothetically, right? Um, but this is going to be, you know, this is a calculated column. It gets processed during your refresh. So it's not really going to affect your queries that you're running, your dashboards and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. The other thing that's worth mentioning here, and I, I want this to be a super quick video, but there's so much stuff. I would actually build this expression that I'm doing right now back in like the Power Query editor to get better storage. I build it back in SQL, build it back in my Excel, you know, worksheet, wherever it is. I'll try to build this further upstream before I load the data in the Power BI desktop just to get better compression. Trust me on that. But today I'm just trying to show you the case statement. So let's go. All right. So we're going to do that and then we'll go down to the next one and we're going to do if the customer is greater than or 30 to 35. I should have just wrote this in advance to make this a little bit faster here. They're going to be 44. And if they don't meet that criteria, I'm going to say if the customer is greater than or equal to 18. Now for this example, I'm going to not do an else statement um, just because we're going to be building on this in a minute. And so we'll say this is 18 to 34. Let's close this up. Boom. Super easy to read, very clean, easy to manage, easy to come in here and troubleshoot and see if anything's wrong with our code. So this is the beauty with the case statement. Now, that's it. That works. And essentially this true expression at the beginning is saying, hey, we're going to check each of these expressions to see if they're true. If this is true, then do this. Uh, once again, go read the blog by you. I've not read that blog in many years, so I can't articulate exactly what's going on here. I just know it works. Now, I do want to show you very, very briefly here. How would we further build this out? Two things I didn't show you. One, adding additional logical conditions in here. Two, the else statement. So if, if nobody fell fell into any of these buckets, then what happens, right? We don't want to return blank. So we would say else return this other thing. So we'll get to that in just a moment. The other thing we can do is we can say, hey, if customer age breakdown is greater than or equal to 55 and they meet some other criteria. So let's say that for the sake of argument, I don't love this example. I just came up with it briefly here. But for the sake of argument, we only want to put them into a bucket if they've had enough transactions with our company, right? So Larry Gill here has only had one transaction with our company. So he would not qualify. We do not have enough data about this customer, so we're not going to calculate it. So we're going to say they have to have a minimum of three transactions. So here's how we would do that, right? I would say and double ampersand sign and the customer total transactions here is greater than or equal to three. There we go. And that's going to actually work. It's super easy, super lightweight expression right there. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the same thing for this customer. I'll do the same thing for this customer. And then I'll do the same thing for this customer, for that category of customer, if you will. And then finally, finally, we're going to say, look, they don't fall into any of those buckets. We're going to say not enough data, right? So that's going to be our answer there. Data with an A, not data, data. All right. And so that's it right there. We're going to hit enter. We'll let that finish up. We'll come over here and check it out. We got an error message. So I clearly messed up and made a mistake here. All right. So I used the wrong column there. It's not age breakdown. It's supposed to be customer age. So I apologize if you were watching. I'm like, what in the world is wrong with this expression? I used the wrong column. Uh, that's what get you get for uh, doing these videos at certain times of the day and week and what have you. So we're going to switch this up real quick. I'm going to change this to customer age, which is what it should be. Age breakdown is a text and that is exactly why that was not working. So we'll come in here. Let's get rid of that. Do the same thing here and then do it one final last time uh, just to show exactly what those results are. All right. And so this right here will give us what we're looking for finally. If they have more than three or three or more transactions, I don't remember if I did more than three. Yep, three or more transactions, then we will get their age breakdown. Else, we get not enough data. And that's how you do it. This is a very simple, very easy method for essentially doing a case statement in DAX, similar to what you might be familiar with if you come from a SQL background. Thank you guys for joining me. Sorry for that little hiccup there. Happens when you're doing live demos and I'm not recording it again, so it is what it is. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.